Hello. Okay, so we're still in key area seven of unit two of higher human biology. So that's pathology of cardiovascular disease. And this time we're looking at thrombosis. The previous video was on atherosclerosis. And remember, we looked at the idea that sometimes the atheroma can get so large that the lumen cannot allow blood to pass through it and the blood clots to form a thrombus. We'll be investigating that process a little bit more here. Okay, so thrombosis, this is important that you know the difference between these two kind of things. So thrombosis is the process by which a clot actually forms inside an artery or a vein. So the process of the clot forming. A thrombus is the clot itself. So a thrombosis is the process in which a thrombus is formed. Um, and it's the thrombus that actually is the thing that blocks the artery, artery or vein. I'm getting really distracted by my neighbour parking. Oh, anyway, uh, thrombus formation. Okay, so that we're going to go through the steps of it just now is step number one. When the endothelium is damaged, platelets in the blood can sense this and release clotting factors. So, for example, say you've got such a big atheroma that more endothelial damage causes, then platelets that are already floating inside the blood will detect this and release this stuff called clotting factors. The second thing that happens is that these clotting factors will activate a dormant enzyme in the blood. And this enzyme is called prothrombin. So the clotting factors will activate this. When this is activated, it causes the prothrombin to become the active version of it, which is, is just called thrombin. So clotting factors basically change prothrombin from this inactive enzyme to thrombin, which is an active enzyme. OK, uh, the thrombin starts converting a soluble protein, again, that's already floating around in our blood, into a sticky threaded insoluble compound called fibrin. So in its fibrinogen form, it's completely soluble. It flows through your blood. You barely it's barely detectable, that kind of thing. As soon as thrombin does its thing to fibrin, it changes the structure of it so that it becomes insoluble and it basically forms it's, Fibres that are not dissimilar to a spider's web in terms of their stickiness and in terms of their ability to mesh together with each other. It's a horrible image. It's not that. Look, that um, looks like spider webs to me. It does. Uh, so the, the sticky fibrins then thread, they start to knit together. They basically make this kind of mesh, kind of like a spider's web, I guess, <laughs> um, in which in this they catch both red and white blood cells. And this starts to form a clot. This starts basically form a mass. And this is this is the clot forming. So the thrombus that's actually formed is a result of the red and white blood cells that have been caught in this sticky fibrin net, essentially. Now, this happens any time you get any kind of injury. So say someone punches in your face and you get a, a bruise. The idea is at some point you had capillaries that were burst and bleeding. This action happened to clot those capillaries and to prevent you from bleeding out in, under your face. Uh, if you cut your finger, again, same thing happens, a clot happens. Now, the location of the clot is important. If the clot happens inside an artery, that's when we call it a thrombus. If it happens on your finger, we call it a scab, okay? It, so uh, thrombuses obviously then lead to more severe problems. If you've got a clot in your blood, this is not necessarily ever really a good thing. Um, so when a thrombus is blocking an artery, this obviously then prevents other things getting through. So things that the blood may be carrying, such as oxygen and nutrients, the things that are kind of vital for your survival, if they can't get through because the blood can't get through, this is going to be bad. So any kind of tissue or any organ that's needing these really, really important things cannot get them. And this is because the thrombus is blocking it. And this can result in tissue or organ or whatever it is that it's leading to death like in this picture here you can see a lovely horrible bit of black leg that is tissue death in the leg because there has been a thrombus it's blocked the blood vessel leading to that so it's not got the blood supply it's not got the oxygen and nutrients it needed to survive so it has died i actually have nightmares about that kind of scenario you know like if it's in real life mm -hmm. if you prod that they can't feel it at all because again the nerve damage it's nerve cells dead. are dead as well so you can actually prod it and practically stick your finger in it and they don't sense <laughs> uh, okay so this is a lot of writing in on this one but basically what happens is you've got high pressure blood on the other side of the clot and nothing on the other side. So you've got high pressure blood, clot, nothing. Eventually, the blood pressure might get actually quite high on the other side of the clot. And this can actually cause bits of the clot to break off. Now, a broken off bit of a clot has got another name to learn. Yay, more vocabulary. And it's called an embolus. OK, so a broken off bit of clot that's traveling freely through the bloodstream with the blood uh, as it flows on. That's called an embolus. Now, 
depending on which artery the embolus ends up blocking, it can cause two things. It, myocardial infarction is one of them in stroke. It can also cause tissue death elsewhere in the body. But two examples that we look at is myocardial infarction and stroke. Now, you've got to think about this logically. If you've got a big artery, we know what big arteries do. They split and they become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and then they become capillaries. So if we have a clot in a big artery, and a little bit of that clot breaks off, we are going to end up blocking a smaller artery somewhere down the chain. Now, if that smaller artery is in the heart, that's where we get myocardial infarction. If it's in the brain, that's when we're going to get a stroke. So myocardial infarction, which basically is just the fancy name for a heart attack, but we will forever call it myocardial infarction now. Uh, this is when an embolus forms a clot in the coronary artery. So an embolus is bro broken off from a th thrombus, it's travelled through the blood, it's made it to the coronary artery, so the artery that's supplying your heart with all the necessary things it needs to survive, and the embolus has now become a clot in that artery. So this means that the heart is no longer getting the oxygen and the nutrients and the various good things it needs which again, as we just said, results in some tissue death. But when that is in your heart, that's not a good thing. When part of your heart is dead, that's when, or, or dying, or basically having any kind of issue, mm. that is when it can, all, it can no longer kind of keep its rhythm, it can't, be, it can't do its job. And if your heart can't do its job, you're in a bad, bad place. It seems like every slide I'm on, it ends with me saying <laughs> you die it's, as a result of the it. The unit's called cardiovascular disease. It's, it's going to be grim. Okay, uh, there's basic first aid that we can sort of have a look at there. Um, that This is recommendations from the St. John's Ambulance. So first of all, if you do think that somebody's having a heart attack, you need emergency care. That's the only thing that's going to help this person. The lazy W is the name for the position that you can put people in. So the idea is they should be propped up with their legs kind of loosely bent at them. Um, and the idea is what that's helping to do is that's helping keeping blood circulating as much as their heart is capable of pumping around their body. They give them aspirin one, I've never known that before, but aspirin does help with blood pressure uh, and vasodilation of arteries. So I think that's maybe the one of the reasons why they, they recommend that one. So stroke being the other thing, so we said myocardial infarction is one of the big ones because that's when an embolus occurs in your coronary arteries which causes you to have a heart attack. The other one is when an embolus occur travels and occurs in your brain, this is what causes a stroke. So a stroke is to do with your brain. Brain, similar to heart, it needs oxygen and nutrients to survive. Your brain doesn't get these things, again, very, very bad. So when the artery that is actually giving oxygen and nutrients to your brain is blocked, that is not a good thing. It results in, yet again, tissue death because it's not getting the oxygen uh, that it needs to survive. And when that happens in a part of your brain, this is just known as a stroke. Yeah, this comes up as an exam question every now and then. Uh, along Something along the lines of describe how a atherosclerosis can lead to a stroke or how a thrombus can lead to a stroke, you do need that key idea of it's a blockage of an artery in the brain. If oxygen is cut off, then the brain cells are going to start to die. Okay, now um, just again a little bit of first aid on that. Detecting and restoring blood supply is key in a stroke to saving as much brain tissue as possible because of course you are inside your brain. Your whole personality, everything you know, everything you do is inside your brain. And if start, part of your brain starts to die, you might lose part of yourself. So the Act Fast campaign is over TV every now and then. I'm trying to try not to mix it up with facts from uh, COVID stuff. Um, but the idea is you're looking for the face falling on one side because that indicates the side of the brain that's being affected. Weirdly, your facial muscles are contracted almost all the time while you're awake. If they start to droop, that's an indication that they've relaxed, indication of problem with the brain. Arms, can you raise your arms up and keep them there? Uh, speech, can they speak or is their speech slurred? And then T for time to call 999. If you see any of those signs uh, or more than one of those signs, that's when you have to do that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously speed being really, really important. And this if part of your brain is dying, you want to deal with it quickly because the longer you take to deal with tissue death in your brain, the more of your brain that is going to basically die. The more, The longer you take the less likely you are to have bits of your brain saved. And obviously, the more of your brain that's dead, the more of you that goes with it, essentially. So it's really, really important. The quicker you notice someone's having a stroke, the quicker you get them help, because then you are more likely to save more of them. And again, if you leave it too long, you will die very quickly. Is that time number five that you said that? Okay, so let's uh, summarize thrombosis then. So step one, an injury to the endothelium causes release of clotting factors from platelets. Okay, the clotting factors then cause the conversion of the inactive prothrombin to the active thrombin. Okay, thrombin is then going to convert fibrinogen to fibrin. Uh, the fibrin forms sticky threads that form 
that form a thrombus with the red blood cells and the white blood cells within it. Okay, and then depending on which artery gets blocked, uh, thrombosis or embolises may lead to stroke or myocardial infarction. So stroke if it's an artery in the brain, myocardial infarction if it's an artery like the coronary arteries. Okay, so that's the summary of thrombosis uh, and we'll see you in the next section of this unit. See you then.